How many years can some people exist before they're allowed to be free? How many times can a man turn his back and pretend that he just doesn't see? The answer, my friend, is blown in the wind. The answer is blown in the wind. Sounds good. Hey, everybody. Welcome. Um, my name is Moses Ross. This is Progressive Radio on TV on Facebook Live. <laughs> uh, we have been uh, adapting our delivery methods here of our message. Uh, we've been on cable access for many, many years. And um, cable access used to be the way that the common folk would be able to get the word out about what they are doing and things that are going on about in the community and, and what their opinions are, where anybody could go in and, and record a show. Uh, nowadays, it's a whole different world, isn't it? We can come on here and we can stream on Facebook Live and we can do a Zoom conference and we can talk to people from around the world and we can share that information with you, the viewers. So. I'm really excited to be doing this, uh, and I'm doing this with, of course, Sherry Merida. She is uh, the videographer extraordinaire, networker extraordinaire. How you doing, I'm Sherry? I'm doing fabulous today. How are you, Moses? I'm <laughs> wonderful, Sherry. I really want to thank you for, for giving me the motivation and the tools to be able to do this. This is uh, pretty exciting stuff. Uh, we're on a new frontier here, right? Eh? Yes, I'm super excited. And guess what? I got um, the honor of being the Independence for Progressive Action Director of Communications. You, so that is, starting today or tomorrow, I start taking that over. That is fantastic news. They have been so successful in getting the word out about progressive issues, uh, both in Clackamas and in Multnomah County. It's really cool. Um, they've been, I, I went to an event that they sponsored, a debate that they sponsored down there at the Lake Theater in Lake Oswego. Oh. Um, they've, so they're very, there's a lot of active folks and uh, I can't wait to see what you put out. Communication yeah, I'm so excited. Clarity was awesome and she showed me what they're doing. I, you know, I mostly paid attention to you and the progressive action groups. <laughs> um, IPA I knew about, but I didn't know a lot about them, mostly because they're independents. And right. while I like to think of myself as an independent, I, you know, I have a job to do. So I don't sure. always get to do these things, but I'm going to make time. Well, I think that groups like that show that there's a real hunger out there for good information, good political information, and also good ways to get involved. Um, and IPA has done a great job in, in motivating the troops, educating the troops, and giving them things to do, you know. I really it, like Justice Democrats. I was trying to get in with them, but they, they kind of, um, they were doing a lot that, that went a, a bit over my head and too often too fast, and I just couldn't keep up. So I, I understand. I think IPA is more of a homegrown organization focusing on homegrown issues or at least uh, homegrown action. Yes, you know? very much so. Yeah. And and it's funny that this can kind of lead into our next our topic, one of the topics that we we're going to talk about, and that is how can we make a difference in our activism? You know, there's been so much going on in the world nowadays and it's really easy to feel helpless and what to do you know wonder what to do um that's why i was so encouraged to hear about you getting that ipa communications gig i think that's yeah i mean that's one way that you can at least make sure that you're empowered to be able to get the good word out and so yeah. and ipa is another one of those groups and you're my hero i always see you going out and spending time with the candidates and, and working for them and promoting them and trying to make sure that their message gets out. Well, I, you know, it's, I, I think it's for me at least, and I think it's very common throughout is that it's the, the common values, the foundation of the common values. And that's why folks get involved with the IPA because feel they have those common values of those progressive values. And uh, 
you need to have that reinforced. And so it's easy to, you want to get involved with groups of um, people that share your values. And that just gets me excited to know that I'm promoting, working with people that share my values and I'm attracting others that share my values to me, you know, in, as far as voters are concerned, for sure. And especially as far as other activists like yourself, you know. Yeah. And it's I, because of this show that I met you. So that's why I try to always stay involved in the show and what you're doing and stuff like that. Well, thanks. Hey, and I'll say this, Sherry, I think we, we both are so fortunate to be able to have a medium that we can use to be able to express ourselves. And I, 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 I originally got made in cable access years ago through the Mount Hood Community College program they had called Speak Out, nice. the Speak Out program. And it was just a 10 minute, 20 minute gig that you could do to talk about whatever you wanted to. And I would do that really consistently and it felt comfortable doing it. This was back in the nineties when it had that strong, a real strong impact because there was not much else to watch. No, nope, not really. <laughs> you know, I, I know there are people out there that remember the old uh, cable access television shows of the nineties or, or uh, in Portland, at least there were some real characters out there. Right. Uh, yeah. So, but it's a whole different world now and we have to, you know, we have to have our mediums to get our word out and, and social media is just a natural. Yes, it is. And it's a natural intro into our discussions for this evening because it has actually propelled us into national and international subject matter that we should probably really discuss the riots, the, the, the poor leadership at in the White House for COVID and, and other things. You were nice enough to send a list. Mm -hmm. So what's on your mind? Well, let's start at the very top of it all. Uh, leadership. Leadership. The, the, the COVID-19 pandemic really illustrated to me our, who the, our leaders are. And I say that all the way down from volunteers for with with uh, raising funds or to to help the disenfranchised, you know, or to help the people that need it, all the way up to our president. You know, leadership is it really times of crisis. Character really shows. And so, let me give you an example of that on a real local level here in town. There were candidates out there that were not focusing on their election, but they were focusing on the people that needed assistance and trying to get them COVID supplies and to make sure that they were taken care of. Yep. And they may not have won their race, but they left an, an indelible impression on voters of their leadership. And I think now contrast that with uh, a governor in a red state that is not thinking of the populations, but they're only thinking of their political gain, of political gain. Our president who is hiding in a bunker while people are protesting out front and, and people are dying. You know, we've more, 100,000 people died, have died. I mean, it's, it just, it's maddening how sad it is. So yeah, leadership. Um, I think times of crisis really illustrate it. And uh, it's been, Maddening on one hand did not be able to get it from the larger federal level, but it has been encouraging to see it happen at the local and the state levels. How do you, what's your thoughts on that? Um, you know, I agree at every level of your discussion. Um, I'm a little bit more in line with being completely and totally disgusted with most of the people on social media right now. Because a, a large part, a large number of our population still does not see the complete and total shallow coward in the White House. They don't see it. They're making excuses to this day. After everything, after, I mean, we are so close to losing our democracy. It's not even funny. And they still don't see it. They're still making excuses and it they just they don't see the lack of leadership they don't see the complete ignorance at every level of his administration 
big part of which today, I believe it was today, he was in a uh, briefing about the the riots supposedly made no mention of George Floyd, made no mention of the deaths, walked out without answering any questions because he's a coward and he's inept and he's inadequate. Well, let's put it this way. I think once again, his actions speak louder than words. His actions during this crisis have been very self-centered, have been very, not have not been focused on the general well-being of our of our citizenry and you know it shows it really shows where his priorities are now here's the here's the the good news and the bad news the good news is is that whenever there is a leadership void something fills it and someone will fill it and right now in my mind it's joe biden that is filling that leadership uh, void I'd like to, I really want him to step up even further so that he is a stark and complete contrast to our current leadership so that it's a really easy choice come November for folks. You can have good, you can have evil, you can have, you know, you can listen to the devil on your shoulder or you can listen to the angel on the other shoulder. But you know, and it's, you know, that goes to people are comparing Biden and Trump as the same, only on different sides of the spectrum. Right. And oh, yeah. I'm in awe. I don't get it. And Bernie has, Bernie was the first to step up. He was the first to promote co, uh, the COVID response as far as economic stimulus and getting checks out to people who really need it because they're losing their jobs. By the way, 106,582 People have died in the United States due to our global pandemic. That's amazing to me. That's and you as know of today. You know what's sad about this is I, I is that we have not had the proper we have not had the opportunity as a nation to be able to properly mourn the deaths of all of these people no. and to be able to uh, say goodbye to them because of the pandemic. So many people were not able to be with their loved ones. And, and so it was a, a lonely and isolated process. And think about how that just on a personal level, how this whole pandemic has affected you, the viewer, and then times that by 20 with the death of a, of a, of a loved one. You know, it's so it kind of puts the whole inconvenience of wearing a mask off to the side, doesn't it? As far as it makes it pretty minuscule uh, as far as a concern, you know, I, I, I my attitude is is been very tempered because I have a mother who is in a rehab facility who I haven't been able to see but once in the last three and a half months. And it's because they were good enough and quick enough to restrict access at that particular rehab so that there were, you know, no outbreaks of, 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 of COVID-19. Now that didn't happen in all of those. And it's just, it, you know, so I, I have more going on here that I don't want to be the, my motivation is to make sure that my mother doesn't get sick. My motivation is to make sure I don't get sick and my friends don't get sick. And so, you know, you wear a mask. I even thought about wearing the mask on this show just for a point or a principle of the point. But I am in my office and I'm secluded, and so I think it's okay. Right. Does that make sense? How I feel about that? Yeah. It's just it's just amazing to me how it's happening. And then and then compounding the entire situation of the pandemic, we have that death of George of George Floyd. It just the the pandemic had already exposed the weaknesses and the the uh, of our social safety net. And the weaknesses and the and the the, the 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 holes within the social structure that our government has provided uh, for its citizens, you know, the, the degradation of it over the last thirty years of, of Republican yeah. efforts to to drain the swamp, if you will, yeah. and, and so now here is this here is the end result of all of those efforts a government that is, has an inability to be able to properly respond to the needs of society in time of a crisis. 
we have no masks. We're having to have governors that are bartering with foreign countries to be able to have take priority in the purchasing of, of PPE from the federal government over Trump. I mean, that is just amazing to me that we're we're bidding against a high bidder and it's our government. You know, God forbid he actually get together and and you know use that executive power that he has in in, in, in the War Powers Act to be able to go in there and and, and, and and enforce the production of all of this equipment. So, you know, that our healthcare workers have the better equipment than our cops do, you know, military wise. I just, it just, ah, I'm on a roll, oh, I tell yeah. you, but it, but it's, it, it's not a. It, As a leader, ah, what would you yeah. do in that situation? What would I do? Well, you have to confront it you have to acknowledge it immediately that there is a problem first off and then you have to acknowledge that the, the that we together as a team work to work towards a solution and you have full transparency in how you go about in uh, dealing with the crisis and the actions that you take during the crisis trump has done the, the complete and absolute opposite He's been afraid to let people know what he wants because he's been doing it from a self-vested interest. He, you know, there's he owns stock in the medical companies that are testing that stuff that he was taking, cyclochloroquine or whatever it's called. You know, so it, it's such a contrast. But it's and you would think that that contrast would be so apparent that some of our elected leaders would would see it and and, and grasp it. And some of them are. Some of them definitely are. Andrew Cuomo, uh, yep. uh, Governor Wise, all the way down to, uh, you know, local officials in Clackamas County. Ken Humbertson has been doing a fantastic job in communicating what's been going on yes. county-wise. You know, I that's just, that that's leadership. So it's, we're going to have to decide as an electorate. I, I, I think that this, the circumstances I think are, illustrating the contrast so dramatically that when it comes election time, it's it's gonna be a pretty simple choice if you give it any thought, you know? And I think that will finally overcome that, those blinders that you're, you're pointing, that you had pointed out of people that still don't get it. I think they get it. There's, I think they, they, they hear it. They can't acknowledge it because that would mean that they're wrong. Right. And that's a human, that's a fundamental human uh, uh, fault to. Really dealt with, with this group for a yeah. long time. Unfortunately, yes. Yeah, you're right. It is. And uh, there are so many comparisons between now and 1968, uh, with the last year of major societal upheaval and change, you know, when all these things came together at once, you know, with the assassinations of our leaders, kids dying at a, at a, a 50 a day in Vietnam, you know, and, and the pressure of knowing that you were potentially going to be called up for the draft, uh, economic turmoil, you know, that sort of thing. And so I tried to maintain optimism that in November we'll get a new president who will do something about this. See, that's yeah. another question I have, and I'm trying not to talk too much because there's a, a feedback issue that I'm trying to figure out where it's coming from. Mm -hmm. but, um, that's another thing that I've been struggling with lately is independents and progressives, and in some cases, center Democrats, center right, are rehashing the 2016 election and talking about what a horrible candidate Hillary was. They still don't get it was Republican lies. They still don't understand that while she wasn't a perfect candidate, two thirds of what was being thrown at her as her character were lies, straight up lies from 30 years of dealing with Republicans. And that's because as first lady, she went and stood in front of them and said, we need healthcare and this is my plan. Sorry, you don't like it, you know, and they didn't like that. So they've done nothing but pound on her ever since. I We have progressives doing that to this day. And I'm like, one, what does it matter now? Two, she 
But I had somebody actually tell me that the numbers of that she, you know, she won the popular vote, three and a half million more votes than Trump got. Somebody told me that was credibly disputed. I'm just like, really? How do you do that? You don't because the numbers were there. They right. calculated the numbers just then. Then that means Trump was an elected president. <laughs> right, and right. It's, it's, he it's, wasn't, but still, that just proves it. Right. But now they're trying, they're, they're taking the picture away from 2020, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. They are, and I don't know that they mean to, I think they're trying to make a point, right. but they, they're taking the focus off of 2020 right. and putting well, it be, back because, to old arguments. Yeah. And, and, and on one hand, there's always going to be a segment of our community that will always feel one way or another. I mean, you, you, there's always that segment of, of our community that feels that there's a conspiracy going on when it comes to the virus and blaming everybody from Bill Gates to, Bill Gates you know, communist China. Everybody. You know, I, well, I'm... You I, don't voluntarily right here. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, absolutely. I mean, if they want to track you, why would he go through that <laughs> whole problem of creating a virus to track you when he can just do it on your phone, you know? I, 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 so... But the pervasiveness of that kind of conspiracy is, uh, is, is changing the narrative too much here. It ha it, especially nowadays in our immediate uh, society, our immediate informational society, you know, social media, blah, blah. You know, all the videos that have come out that, with false information that are nice and Hollywood looking like. And, and, you know, and that legitimizes the argument, even though there's no real scientific basis for it, you know, et cetera, et cetera. The point is, is that it, that's the challenge. You know, there's not going to be, there's certain segments of our community that we're never going to be able to convince of the, yes, of the right, of what we consider the right way. All we can do is make sure to get as many people as possible. And so it, it you know, when it comes to progressive values, I think there's a lot of commonality between the mainstream Democratic Party and progressive uh, and and main, and progressive view views on on issues. I think the margin for movement is not very big. It's it, it really isn't. There's not that much of a distance between the two. No. Now contrast that though with what we're up with the Republicans right now, the GOP, which is bought and paid for by Trump now, which is it, which is catering to that extreme segment of the population for turnout, for voter turnout, you know, his base. And, you, you know, you're not going to convince them either. So we have to get those people in the middle. And uh, I feel to get us to, towards our progressive goals. So, and especially in such a, era right now where the contrast is so large well, so well I, I can't wait four years huh? you've been doing this for a long time how do you keep it from driving you crazy um you have to i i'm fortunate i enjoy the political uh environment i really do i i, I enjoy helping a candidate i enjoy promoting a candidate because once again, it's the shared values thing. I have found that as a common foundation that makes me feel good about helping in how I do and being an activist and being an activist. Um, on the other hand, sure, you know, you read about the riots and you read about this and you read about the latest Trump atrocity and, and, and it can get discouraging. But once again, if you just stick, stick with those values and, and, and believe strongly in them, you'll get the energy back. And at least I did. And you know, uh, I'm, I'm speaking of conversations with people in the progressive arena, one Democrat center, two, and Republican left, three. Because we talk to a lot of people daily about different subject matter. And it's, it drives me crazy because, you know, how do you sift through? the garbage that people are listening to? You know, I, I, that's a really good question. I mean, I guess you kind of have to, I, well, no, I guess you have to know who you're talking to and know when not to, not to uh, beat your head against the wall. 
it, I've, I have found that because I've been very consistent over the years in my views and my actions, that when I do have a, have a discussion with somebody that has a different opinion, they tend to at least respect, I tend to get mutual respect. I, I look at it from, hey, okay, that's your opinion. I respect that. I can see where you're coming from. I feel you. Here's how I feel. But they're repeating you know. falsehoods. No, you have to point it out. You have to tell them that. Whether or not they like it or not is a different story. But I always make it a point to say, you know, that's not true. That is that is that has been perpetuated by the media that has been bought and paid for by the right wing. You know it has, and it, you see what I'm saying. You have to call them on it. I right, feel. But technically, we are the media. <laughs> Those of yeah. us who are on the waves, yeah. on social, on do, we are the media. Yeah. You can't Thank blame you. the media for Trump's spoken word. Good or, point. No. or McCain, or not McCain, um, um, what's his face? The Ted Cruz. Right. His lies, his spoken word. Well, let me ask you. you. Right. Well, let me ask you, how have you felt? How have you gone about it? And is that work? How have I addressed the lies? I just told them they're lies, you know, actually yeah. go do research. Don't you know, stay away from Fox News and actually go do the, re there's independent journalism, there's Media Matters, there's Google, there's a lot of places that you can go to find out what's been true, you know, found to be true and not. You know, it is one of the reasons why Trump has discredited the media as an enemy of the people three, you know, starting years ago is because he realizes that they're one of the few platforms that can actually call him on his lies and you know he 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 went he's gone years now three years before even on twitter you know his favorite medium before they finally called him on his lies you know and now look at him sulking like a a, a disappointed child because all of a sudden you know his twitters uh, are being labeled as you know fat of uh, false so <sighs> We do have a responsibility as a medium. Absolutely. You know, I, I, I think our, our responsibility is to make sure that the good information is out there, or at least the counter information is out there. Our perspective is out there, you know, uh, whether or not you agree with me or a person agrees with me or uh, maybe hopefully some of that information will stick in their head. You know, they'll have a better understanding of, of why I have that opinion. There's other people out there that believe that they have rights with no responsibilities. And that's another aggravating thing. We have rights, yes. We have a bill of rights, yes. But each of those rights has an inherent responsibility attached to it. So in free speech, yes, we are allowed to speak. But we are not allowed to speak in a way that defames or hurts another person. There are actual laws on the books against defamation and against harming others when we choose to express our first amendment rights, right? The second exactly. amendment, we have a second amendment right to bear arms for protecting our family or getting food. We can go to the grocery store and we can call the cops. We do not have the right to just go down the street and shoot whomever we choose right. and get off scot-free. We do not have that right. You must take responsibility for your actions. And I just find it super interesting that people who follow the Trump agenda don't believe that. Well, keep in mind, they have been, they, they've been listening to the Fox News propaganda bullhorn for years now. And there it's, if, it, it's, if, if you watch it for any length of time on the topics that they cover, you'll notice that, A, they don't, top, they don't cover the topics that make Trump look bad. Well, they don't and, cover any actual news topics. Right. right. Well, and the topics that they do cover are, are skewed, are, you know, to, are, are, so, it, it, yeah, it, it's tough. No, I hear you. And, and that's another motivation for what we are doing here is to try to get the good word out to people about what the, the correct word, the accurate word about what's going on. And if it affects some people, then fantastic. We've done what we wanted to do. 
That you reminds know? me. We, Johnny and I were having dinner at a local restaurant. Now that everything's opened up, we actually got to go have something good to eat. Um, <laughs> I'm an okay cook, but yeah. So we, and they had Fox News on it. And generally I would get up and walk out, but I've been supporting this business all the way through the pandemic. And I really like them. Their food's really good. Anyway, so I'm watching, I happen to be facing the TV. They literally took the protests in in minneapolis and flip them around as the protesters were not protesting the killing of an well i don't know if he was necessarily innocent at that moment nobody really does however it was way overkill for a 20 dollar fraud a 20 dollar um fake transfer whatever um which somebody would get a, a fine for. That's not even a felony. Anyways, so they took his killing in cold blood by a paid police officer in uniform and flipped it around to uh, now they're racist against whites and they want to kill whites and that's all Black Matter Black, Black Lives Matter stands for and they're doing the Molotov cocktails which weren't even the protesters. They were you know, third party opportunists who came in from out of state. So, which we found out later, but f seriously, Tucker Carlson sat there and he showed AM Joy or Joy Reid um, talking about the fact that black people across the country are tired of being killed, unarmed and innocent in many cases and twisted that around to white hate. Well, I just could not believe my eyes. <laughs> what makes what the, the, the commonality here between all of the incidents that caused rioting was documentation of the murder by the police of an innocent black man and Rodney King, uh, a black. Uh, Mr. George Floyd, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Eric Gardner. Right. How many, there's been, and you know as well as I do, there are, if for every one that was documented, there are probably hundreds, if not thousands of examples that were not documented, that were out there that create that inherent atmosphere of fear for our black community. And unfortunately, Trump and his followers are using that as a sledgehammer to uh, to demonize and to it, to 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 gain politically to gain politically at those divisions within our country and it's just we have to as individuals we just have to Sherry we have to stand up a for our black brothers and sisters in our country our black fellow Americans. Yes. Fellow yeah. American. And B, we have to take actions. We have to decide upon actions that we can do to, to be able to make a difference, to be able to let people know that it's, we're not going to mm -hmm. tolerate this. You know, and there's many things that we can do. That's what these protests are, or I shouldn't, the, 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 the protests are, are a byproduct of that, of a desire to do something, anything, to be able to uh, correct this wrong. And uh, as you know, we then in turn got uh, folks going into those protests with their own agendas and inciting violence, et cetera. And unfortunately the media and, and political opportunists use it to create their own attitude or to create their own little storyline about what's going on. And that's what's happening in Fox News to make them feel better about what's going on, you know? Sooner or later, you know, it's like the who? What are you going to believe, me or your me or your lying eyes? And that's what we have here with the video. You know, we have it in black and white. Unfortunately, we have it in color. And he was there on his knee for almost nine minutes. The man was dead when he finally put his knee up, took his knee off. Yep. You know, it's and that's not and that's one thing if it's an isolated incident, but it's not an isolated incident. You know. So, uh, yeah, I, I, my heart goes out to 
my heart goes out to our, our black community and anybody that's been affected by this because it's just, it's not us as Americans. It really is not. America is so much better than this. You know. You've seen arguments on the other side of that as well. Oh, I I bet. You know, it you know where this all comes down to, quite frankly. I there's always been there's always been political uh, uh, vitriol. There's always been, you know, uh, uh, negative things said about other politicians, you know, a, a negative environment for politicians. It's been okay. It's been permissible to be able to uh, say things about politicians because there are elected officials and they're supposed to take it. You know, you look back at some of the older campaigns in the 18, 1800s, you know, Lincoln's campaign, some of the things that people said about, yeah, you know, him, that sort of thing. But it's gone to another different level nowadays. And, uh, you know, with Trump, leveraging that inherent hatred or that inherent distrust. And uh, so once again, we have to do something about it. We have to, as Americans, stand up and do something about it. So we are running uh, kind of short on time here. Uh -huh. So one of the other sections of the your list of subjects was recent elections. Oh, yeah. Um, you noted that Jim Bernard would lost as 2T1 and Ken is in a runoff. Right, right. Yeah. Clackamas County really threw a loop there. Um, I don't live in Clackamas County, but my observations of that race were is that, you know, ch uh, Chair uh, Jim Bernard uh, slept on his opponent. And I think his opponent, I understand also changed her image a little bit. And so people have a short memory, voters have a short memory. They forgot that she had been chair maybe for four years, you know, four years ago, she had been chair of the of, of Clackamas County or at least a commissioner on the, no, she was a commissioner along with uh, uh, Jim Ludlow and they'd had all sorts of problems when the two of them were on the on the board. We'll see what happens. I mean, it might be she, being chair has certain um, powers granted to it that you can change policy, have an effect on, on county policy and she might take advantage of that. But I think there's enough commissioners that are, uh, would like to, some uh, stability that will uh, be able to keep her rope in a little bit. Now, Ken was another surprising one too. Um, he got forced into a runoff. He wasn't able to get 50% of the vote. Um, that's not a complete indictment of, of Commissioner Humbertson's work. I think that's just part, that's just the environment right now, you know, right. and he needs to reintroduce himself to the voters in Clackamas County and, and remind them why of the work that he has done and why he's the best choice in November, you know, um, but my impressions of, of Commissioner Humbertson are very positive. We had him on the show here the, a couple of weeks, a couple of months ago. Yes, I, I like him. Yeah. Um, and the I, see, I, this is areas where I need to do some learning because mm -hmm. I was under and have always been under the impression that primaries were our vehicle for determine who would be in the general election. Right. And I'm finding out that that for Oregon is not necessarily so in our district. <clears throat> it, yes. And it depends also on the election, on the type of election it is, who's being elected. I mean, a commissioner. Um, yeah, there, there's certain idiosyncrasies to the rules depending on the uh, on the race. Like uh, the, as a county commissioner, they had to get, for instance, 50% uh, plus one to prevent a runoff in November. Um, so, and Ken was not able to get that 50% threshold. So uh, the second uh, vote getter along with, with Ken uh, goes to, to the runoff in November in the general election. Uh, otherwise, uh, with, Jim, with the chair's race, I guess the chair's race had different uh, uh, regulations behind it or rules behind it. And he didn't, she didn't win by 50% or pardon me, she won by a majority of the vote. It, so it didn't require... There was no, there was only two candidates. You can't have a runoff. That would have been the, yeah. 
So it's a different different rules regulating the chair's race versus the commissioner's race. Does that make so, sense? So do you think we're having a right pendulum swing then? Uh, you know, I here's the funky thing, Sherry. During a pandemic, I it's people want I, I want to say that people want change, but on one hand, I was going to, I think they, during a pandemic, they want, they want consistency. They want leadership there. You would think um, I'm sitting here trying to, in my mind, realize why the chair, why chair Bernard lost his race. I, I don't know if it was a pendulum swing as it was just a bad campaign. Does that make sense? I don't want to attribute it to, um, I think it was just a bad, Jim needed to get his word out better than Tootie did. And Tootie had, it was a woman. Um, she, uh, and in, in, in elections right now, women candidates can be a default uh, choice because they, more people want to see women in uh, positions of power. Does that make sense? So <laughs> anyhow, I know that one of the one of the neat things about technology is that uh, Sherry it, sometimes it it has hiccups, and I think my uh, Sherry has had a hiccup with her uh, uh, computer. So what I'll do is I'll wrap this up at least for the time being, and then we can always uh, hopefully one of these days be able to splice this back in. And we were getting pretty close to our time limit, anywho. So uh, I do want to thank everybody for for being with Sherry and I tonight. Uh, and to talk about some of these certain issues and talk about these issues. I know that times look tough right now. There is not a lot of rays of hope on the horizon, but I just would like to be able to leave everybody with, the, uh, with a ray of hope uh, that the, the world will not end, that we will get rid of Trump in November, and that we will become the America that we have the potential to be. And so one would hope that that would be the case. Oh, it looks like Sherry's back. Sherry, did, did you get back? Maybe she did. We're doing some experimentation here, I guess. Let's see here. There we go. Bear with us, folks. I was just wrapping, Sherry, I don't know if you can hear me or not. Hopefully if she can. Uh, the joys of technology. So anyhow, yes, we have a lot of things on the horizon, a lot of good, a lot of reasons for hope, for hope. And even in these times of, of, of the unknown, and uh, we've done it before as a, as a species and we can do it again as a species, that's for sure. And you just have to stay positive about what the outcomes are and get active in, in affecting change. And there are many ways to do that. You know, the presidential campaign, Joe Biden sure, sure can use your help. We need to be his surrogates here in Oregon, that's for sure. Be able to get the word out about his campaign and get, and, uh, uh, get people registered to vote. And uh, there's also some great candidates coming up um, in, the, uh, in the general election. I'd like to do a quick shout out to my friend in Eugene, Matt Keating, who won his race for city councilor, which I thought was cool. Um, also in November in Clackamas County, there's some good races coming up. We've got uh, in Lake Oswego, there's a, a mayor's race. Uh, John uh, Lamada and uh, uh, Teresa Koloff are, in, uh, are running. Uh, there's city council spots that are, uh, there are three city council spots in Lake Oswego that are up for election. Um, so we'll see how that goes as well. The answer is blown in the 